What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com. I'm here today to discuss a very, very near and dear topic to my heart, and that is the best chair for chronic low back pain. You're at work, you have a desk job, you're sitting all the time, and you're like, my back is smoked and my chair sucks. What should I do? And that's a great question. This actually came up in my private Facebook group. If you are in that group, um, you probably have you probably saw it. If not, like, what are you doing with your life? It's I'm questioning that. Go over to Facebook and find the exercise for back pain relief private community. Answer the questions. And if you answer the questions, I will let you in and you'll be a part of an awesome community. But today I wanna to talk about chairs and I'm not gonna give you, I'm not gonna show you a bunch of high-end expensive chairs that you probably can't afford, or at least I can't afford. What I wanna show you are things that I've used in the past, mindsets around what I'm sitting in, and just the tools that I use when I was at my worst when it comes to chronic back pain, and what I sit in now. And it's gonna surprise you. So if you stick around to the end, I think you'll get a ton of value and you'll have a better understanding of what makes a chair especially good for someone who has a chronic back pain situation or a fusion. Let's jump in. Now, if you're smart, you probably already understand that a, simply a chair is not gonna beat your back pain. And if you want to know what I used for years and years and years to overcome years and years of chronic back pain, check out my free guide. It's, it's an actual video that you can watch and, and keep. It's a series of videos that is yours absolutely free. You can get it from fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash back pain workshop. I break down my mentality, the strategies that I use when it comes to exercise and movement, and just the most important important elements of using movement, using exercise to overcome persistent low back pain, regardless of whatever you've tried in the past, even if it worked or didn't work. You've got to check this out. Fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash back pain workshop. So in this video, what I want to do is show you some key things you have to think about or look at or just consider when it comes to purchasing a chair or finding a chair that's going to work for you. When it comes to your desk work, your job, whatever you may do as a hobby, you got to find something that's going to be good for you. It's going to feel good. It's going to give you that relief or give you at least enough time to get some work done before you know things start kind of going weird and you have to get up and walk around. Now, a big misconception is spend more money, right? Get a high quality chair, go to Google and type in best you know, computer chairs for back pain or surgery or whatever you may be looking up, and then voila, you've got a bunch of chair review people giving you what they think is best for low back pain, and odds are they haven't even actually had low back pain for themselves or actually used the chair themselves. So you got to be careful with that. So more money does not necessarily mean a better chair. What I always suggest people to look at is versatility, right? In your work environment, how many options can you bring yourself? How many options do you have available to yourself, right? If you work from home, obviously it's, it's limitless because you can always just be swapping things out. If you're at the office, you're kind of limited. So what I suggest you do if you're at an office is to always go with some kind of like office chair, obviously it makes total sense. The thing about it though is doesn't matter what brand you get, doesn't matter the how expensive it is because ultimately you could sit in this thing and just the way it's set up, unbeknownst to you, it could be really irritating, right? It could just rub you the wrong way, it could be pressing on some kind of um, surgery site in your low back and you can't adjust it to fit you. Case in point, the comment that we had in the Facebook group where the individual has used lots of chairs. She's tried a bunch of things out and oftentimes the support kind of rubs on her surgery site kind of a weird way or just kind of put some unnecessary pressure on it. And she found this chair at like one of her parents' house that has a very open low back and just a nice thoracic um, spine support and a butt indention. And that works awesome for her and it's probably who knows how much the chair cost, but it was probably a cheap, old, hard, stooled chair. I know for me personally, when I was working at a desk job and, work, and sitting for hours and hours and hours, they gave me this piece of junk computer chair and it was garbage. Then we got upgraded to a different kind of chair and it wasn't necessarily the chair, like the cushion or like how I can adjust the backrest. 
it was a lot of different variables. One of them being how I could bring myself closer to my desk, right? How do these arms, do they slide forward, do they slide back? Can I bring myself closer to my work environment without having to lean forward? That's a key thing. Does this extend well, right? Does this go back when you're able to just give yourself a break when you're sitting back into your seat? Some people feel better when they're lounging versus sitting straight up and down trying to keep this perfect posture. When it comes to computer chairs, you're gonna have to play around and one of the best things that I suggest people do is go to some place like Office Max or whatever kind of computer office um, warehouse store that you may have at your hometown and just sit in some. You'll know if you get to try a few out, sit in them, feel if you can adjust the arms, how this feels, just pressing up against your back naturally before you make any adjustments. You'll know whether the computer chair is going to work for you. But this is the kicker. This is the most frustrating part about having persistent back pain and trying to figure out what chair works for you is this chair here, which probably costs about three, $400 in its prime, causes more issues for me in the past than this chair here, which probably is one of the cheaper chairs. It's, there's nothing to this. This is a dining room table eating chair. Nothing reclines on it. The seat is a, a cheap foam part of it. There's no indention. There's nothing special about this chair. The thing about it is when I was at my worst and my pain was the worst, it was these types of chairs. We'll edit that out. It was these types of chairs that gave me flexibility in finding the ideal position for you. And why I like starting from basic, starting from something, something as simple as this, is because you can add stuff in, whether you're sitting on top of this pillow, whether you're sitting up against the pillow like this. It was these types of chairs that brought me the most relief. Even though I had a super expensive computer chair, it was me being able to sit in my chair being relaxed and being able to completely surrender myself to the chair and then get my work done sliding under my desk and being able to work functionally, it was super comforting, right? And it could have put me in a position that felt really good and it was a long lasting feel good, not just like a, okay, oh, okay, now I get back to work, oh, I'm, now I'm in pain, but it was lasting and that's the big thing. What you don't wanna do is sell out for just one super expensive, all-inclusive chair because this might work for some elements, right? For the end of the day where you really need to be lounging or you need more support because you're trying to relax, you're tired, you might need something like this towards the end of the day where when you're early on, this might make you inflamed, it might give you more irritation. So starting with something as simple as this, it could be even just any kind of like picnic table chair. It could be anything. I've seen some crazy chairs and I've sat in some crazy chairs that actually gave me a lot of relief. And just to give you a little insight into like what my day looked like when I was at an office, you know, nine hours a day, if not even more than that, sitting for the majority of that, this is kind of what I would circulate. This is what I would rotate in. So I would have the chair that they gave me you know, of course, any kind of, you know, computer chair, you got your, your little arch support that you might use. This was actually way too aggressive for me at the time, but I used it in some situations and I would experiment based on the day. So I'd have this, I'd have my nice little super expensive computer chair. When that failed on me, I would pull out the super basic chair and it wasn't this specific one, but it was another one that I used to use that didn't recline, didn't do anything, but it allowed me to have a firm, hard surface to get myself in a good position to be comfortable and to work efficiently without having to always be adjusting, right? Then I would add like small little pillows. This would be my lumbar support, whether it was this one or even a smaller one that I don't think I even have anymore. But I love that thing because it was perfect. And sometimes it's just a matter of going around your house or your office or bringing something from your home to your office so that you can figure out what's gonna be best for you at work. Then I would cycle in a stability ball. Oh. This thing was awesome and it honestly was a, 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 the butt of a lot of jokes, no pun intended, because my butt was on it, but it was, it was just a very funny topic of discussion in the office because I'd be the person who I would start here or I would finish in this chair here, whatever the, the, the route would be for that day, and I would eventually work my way into this seat here, right? Or I would start with this thing and then work my way around. 
depending on the day. But I had this, I'd pull it out and I'd sit on it and eventually got to the point where like people were bringing their own chairs in because they were in pain, they were aching and, and having issues and they wanted to find some relief. So changing up the environment of what I was sitting in is what brought the most relief. And they started seeing for themselves that as they would swap things in and out, they'd go from their computer chair, they'd go to their stability ball, then from their stability ball back to their computer chair. And they gave themselves that variety or the different flavors of sitting, their bodies were responding well because the body was moving you'd have to get up you'd have to roll your ball out you'd have to move your chair out of the way you'd have to sit down get adjusted like you're moving a lot of people think it's like oh it's the ball the, the secrets in the firmness of the ball or the centimeters the inches of the ball it has to be 62 versus 72 like they get so caught up in those details when the body just wants to move you've been sitting there for so long in a stagnant position a chair like this doesn't move so if you you try to sit nine hours straight in this chair, your body is gonna be reacting to it. Versus something like this, where you can actually move it around, you can fold it back, you can adjust it, go high, go low, whatever you wanna do, but this might not work forever. So you have to give yourself some variety in what you're using. And then from here, I'd actually go to a standing desk. So I converted, I kind of built this like homemade standing desk environment that I could kind of pull up, put my stuff on top of very quick, and then get to work, and I was standing. So. I know what you're thinking. You're like, William, you just wasted all of my time watching this video. You haven't told me one best chair for back pain because I wanna give you the truth, right? There's the truth, then there's the junk that you'll find online, on YouTube, lots of different reviews that they're gonna say, oh, click the link in my bio because you can get a free 25% off your, your, your back pain chair. I'm not selling, I've got no chairs to sell you. What I wanna do is give you truth when it comes to what you can expect and what the reality is when it comes to finding the best chair for persistent low back pain. So when it comes to your day, when it comes to finding the best chair for you, make sure you give yourself different flavors for you to try. There is not one chair. If you wanna go out and buy a quality office chair that has multiple planes and ways of adjusting, that's great. I think every desk worker deserves a good quality office chair. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're in persistent pain and you've had issues for a long time, the chair isn't gonna make it better or a more expensive chair or a higher quality chair isn't necessarily going to make it better. What your body needs is movement. What your body needs is variety. And if you're not changing your jobs and you're gonna be in an office job for the rest of your life, which is nothing wrong with that, Invest in variety, invest in options that you can bring out or bring in, whatever it may be, that you can change up your environment, change up your work environment. I know it's weird. I know you feel awkward because you're the one who has all these different chairs, but remember the status quo is to sit in the chair all day and do nothing but work. That is what everyone expects themselves to do because that's the robotic corporate life. Be different, change it up, give your body a chance to breathe, give your butt a chance to breathe and give yourself some variety. And I promise you, once you start incorporating and experimenting and don't rule anything out until you've tried it, you're gonna find that old trashed seat that's down in your basement that your grandma used to sit on is gonna be a game changer for you. And that is it guys. I'd love to hear what your experience has been with sitting in the most randomest chair ever. Let's have a contest. Leave a comment below. If you have ever sat in anything that is embarrassing, you're like, yo, I get more relief sitting on the toilet than I do in my office chair. Let me know. Let's just be honest. Let's, let's, let's lay it all out on the table. Leave it in the comment section below this video. Make sure you hit the like button if you like the video and share it because spreading the word is love and we gotta share more love with the world. And if you're looking to find other ways to improve the way you feel, improve yourself to get back into doing the activities that you love, I've got a free back pain workshop, a guide that you can get. It's a video-based mini course. It's absolutely free. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash back pain workshop. I show you how to use things that actually work when it comes to movement, when it comes to exercise, how to program your workouts, the mindset, the core training, all those things. I package it and give it to you as a starting point for you to get your life back. That is a key thing. Fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash backpain workshop. Thanks so much guys and I will see you on the next episode.